thank you very much for your applause. It's funny really because we never really think about the level of hand and arm function required to make a simple clapping sound. It's like so many other two-handed activities we do hundreds of times a day. We don't ever think about them. But for young people with a condition called hemiplegia, two-handed activities are sometimes impossible. In fact, they're incredibly difficult. So hemiplegia is caused by an injury to the brain, and the literal translation is hemi, half, plegia, paralysis. It affects approximately one in 1,300 people, so it's actually relatively common, and it means that independent living is a real struggle. In fact, the people that we work with, they tell us that they have three top goals. They just want to be able to get dressed independently, wash themselves independently, cut up their own food and eat independently. They tend to go to mainstream schools, but they spend all day feeling like the worst or the slowest of everything. It's an incredibly difficult world for them. Many of them suffer bullying and teasing. And one 13-year-old girl who we're working with, she said that everyone in her school calls her the one-armed girl. And in her eyes, she says, well, she described her hemiplegia as a horrendous and terrifying disability. Now, we're very blessed in our country. We have a national health service that does so much and for so many people. But for young people with hemiplegia, they have limited access to services. They need to be given very often a lot of monotonous exercises to practice on their own accord. But they're kids and they're not usually motivated to do so. So what's our solution? Well, our solution is magic, literally magic. Let me introduce to you my colleague, Richard McDougall, who's a professional magician. And he's going to show you an example of some part of our program. Would you like to see some magic? Yes. Three of you. Great. Uh, <laughs> awkward. Uh, this is the mystery of the jumping ball. And it only takes place over a count of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's great magic, but how does that solve the solution? Well, let me tell you. We've brought together paediatric specialist occupational therapists to work alongside Magic Circle magicians. The therapists explain the exact type of exercises and movements that the young people need to practice to build up their muscle strength and dexterity in their affected side. The magicians then go away and carefully select magic tricks that in the performing of the trick, it replicates the exact movement and exercise that these young people need to do. We then teach the young people how to perform magic, which works to improve their self-esteem, their confidence, and their communication skills. So if we look at this trick again, perhaps just the first half of this trick, say, and look at the functional reasons why this particular trick has been selected. The mystery of the jumping ball. So in that first movement alone, the young people are having to engage the shoulder extend the elbow, extend the wrist, and use a pinching grasp. So the larger movements are essential for things such as putting on a coat, the smaller movements for picking up small objects. One, two, three, four. And in this part of the sequence, the young people have to stretch the hands out flat, extending the fingers, followed by supination of the forearm or turning the palms face up. So that translates exactly, for example, to being able to stabilise a piece of paper when you're writing or carrying a plate or a tray. Five, six, seven, eight. Now this part is about coordination. So the young people have to be able to move both hands independently yet simultaneously. Now that's essential for so many things in our day-to-day -day lives. For example, using a knife and fork to cut up your food. So. You can see in just a small part of that sequence the huge number of reasons why we use magic. And that's just one trick of many that we teach the young people. 
So we invite the young people to come along for 10 days over their school holiday, in their eyes to become young magicians. But from our perspective, we're able to deliver 60 hours of intensive task-focused therapy, which I'm pretty sure the kids aren't going to be signing up to otherwise. It also means we're able to meet what NICE recommends for this patient group. We're under, we've underpinned all of our programmes with scientific research. The papers have been published in peer-reviewed medical journals, so we know that it works. And our National Health Service are now starting to commission this as a clinical service. So that means if you live in certain boroughs or regions and you have hemiplegia, you can go to your GP and be referred on to a magical therapy programme. How exciting is that? <laughs> Now, magic is exciting and fun and it's very core. And that's what's one of the core strengths of this program, because the young people are motivated to go away and practice their magic in a way that they weren't with the traditional exercises. Now, one of the other core reasons magic works is we're giving them a skill that their friends don't have. So one boy who we worked with said to us after performing a short magic show, for the first time in my life, People are looking at me for all the things I can do rather than those things that I can't. Now, there's one other reason why I love magic in this setting, and that is the exact um, parallel between magic and the young people's lives. So when you see magic, the reason you get that sense of wonder and excitement is because you think you're seeing something impossible. But when you learn magic, you realize that that thing that seemed impossible is actually possible. You just have to put in a lot of hard work to get there. Now, we give the young people the functional skills and self-belief to take that back into their everyday lives. So all those things that once seemed impossible can be replaced with the possible. Now, it's only right that we should give the last word to the young people that we've been working with as after all, it is their hard work and their determination that is making the magical difference to their lives. It's hard. It feels actually quite a bit sad because no, none of the people in my class actually have any pleasure except for me. So, yeah. No, you can't do it. Ah, oh, man. What do you want to do? Doesn't matter. Everybody believes in me. I'm not the only one with hemiplegia now, so I feel much happier. Feel much better. There we go. I feel more confident doing more things than I could before. Like I can't do that before, but now I can. Done. That was a bit easy. <laughs> when I came here and I saw other people, I didn't know that there was many of us, but there actually are. I feel not so much alone, because even though I've got another person in my school that has hemiplegia, it's just... makes me feel... It makes me feel... Although I've already seen this. Uh, oh no. It makes me feel 
less afraid actually. <laughs>